Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis. And in today's lesson, we're gonna cover one of the most common challenges that most tennis players face on the serve. And that is the waiter's tray position. And we're gonna cover what that is and how you can overcome it with a series of drills that I've found to be very successful over the years. It's really gonna help your serve motion. Now, if you don't have a problem with a waiter's tray on your serve, and you're serving pretty well, there's still some exercises and drills in this lesson that are gonna help you quite a bit. And then finally, stick around to the end because I'm giving away a free gift that's a guide to the key principles you need to master on your serve to make it a professional quality weapon. So stick around and get that free gift and we'll see you after the lesson. So I'm gonna run you through all my favorite drills that are gonna help you transition from the waiter's tray serve to the really high performance serve motion that almost everyone is seeking, but so many people struggle with. So what, you know, of course, one of the main reasons why we have trouble with this transition and getting out of this waiter's tray position is because for many tennis players, we start out that way and we just keep serving that way for a while until it becomes the natural thing that we do. But I want you to think of your serve like an investment account. And every time you serve with poor mechanics, you're depleting your equity. Every time you do the movement correctly, you're building your equity. And for many of you who've been serving incorrectly for quite a while, you're pretty much in negative equity territory. So you've got a lot of work to do just to get back to square one and start building. So think of it that way. So what we're really saying here is that the more repetition you do with the right movement, the better off you're gonna be as you build equity in your serve account. And when I'm talking about repetition, I don't always mean with the ball because this is a distraction from you developing the movement that's ultimately gonna give you the ideal serve. So the first exercise we wanna do is really simulating throwing. And what I call the palm to palm exercise, we've, we've done this a little bit before, where you put the palm of your non-playing hand up, you take the palm of your playing hand and you point it to your ear, face your ear, and then just bring the palm to the palm. So you're on edge here, and you're coming in and squaring up on the hand there, okay? That's gonna help start to get the rotational action you need to get the continental grip to activate and get this motion to work much, much better. Once you've done this a couple of times where you've got your palm facing your ear and then you're going to the palm, now what I want you to do is have your elbow pointing back like you're in a throwing motion, and now the palm is facing the side fence to the right. And now when I make my motion, it's gonna turn in and face the ear and then rotate back out and away as it slaps through the hand. So it's gonna go palm fence, palm ear, palm forward, palm fence. Fence, ear, forward, fence. And that action's really gonna help you build the motion that you need to get in there to trim that waiter's tray position out. So next up, do the exact same thing with the ball. So now the palm is out, the palm is gonna be facing the ear, the palm is gonna face forward to release, and the palm is gonna go back out to the right again for a right-hander. And that is the action we wanna build into this motion. And that's gonna really build the movement that you're trying to seek. And along with that, another exercise you can do that, that really helps is just put the hand up and have the palm facing you again, but have the thumb pointing to the back fence and now just turn so the thumb is now facing the front fence. Back fence, front fence, back fence, front fence. And that is activating the motion that you really want to have in a professional quality serve motion. So after you've practiced the throwing motion, you've got this movement established, put the racket in your hand, make sure you've got the continental grip where the hand is on top, straight line from the tip of the shoulder to the end of the racket, also called the hammer grip. And this is the grip we wanna be serving with. And this is really where most players struggle because in the motion with a continental grip, there's only one place where the strings actually face the ball. And that is as you come into contact. And it feels much, much safer to have the strings facing the ball for a long period of time coming into contact. But that really depletes the swing of the rotational action from the shoulder and the power and acceleration you can get with the continental grip. So, and this is really where, you know, so many players, and I get requests or inquiries all the time, you know, I'm doing so many things right, John, but I just can't break this waiter's tray motion and movement. I, I, I can't get past the, this and get into trusting the new movement. So it takes out a lot of repetition. So now that we've got the continental grip in hand, just start simulating the exact same motion we were doing with the palm and then we were throwing the ball. 
My palm is out, my palm is facing the ear, my palm is facing forward, and my palm is facing right. And just keep doing that and go slow. So you let that action actually blend itself into your swing so it's happening in slow motion. And the more you do this, the more you're going to start to feel how that racket begins to square up on the ball. And it's very, very important that you get a lot of repetition and rehearse this movement a lot without the ball. I think for many players, we're trying to make this change in this adjustment while we're playing matches, and we're not investing enough time in the repetition to replace the bad movement with the good one. So you've got to do a lot of reps. Now the good news is you can do this anywhere. You can do this at home. You do not have to be on a tennis court to make significant changes in your movement, in your motion, at least not at first. Another exercise you can do is a very, very simple one, is just be it up to a fence or a wall and have your racket come up and, and hit that fence on edge. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's gonna help you develop that action in there that's gonna replace the waiter's tray movement. Remember, the waiter's tray movement is only happening because you trust the strings facing the ball and you don't trust the edge of the racket facing the ball and then turning in for contact. So the more you produce this movement in repetition and practice and rehearsing, the more comfortable it's going to be when you actually begin to serve. The next drill you can do is really just a spin off from, from the fence. You're really going to just do the exact same thing. You can have a ball in your hand, you can do your pre-serve routine, you can do everything except place the ball up and just bring your racket in and feel it get to contact point square on the ball. And I, I'll do that again and I'm going to go a little slower. So I'm going to place a ball on edge coming in, turning into contact and feel that action right there. Okay? And just getting the feel of that coming up is going to help you with the next step that we're going to do. So next up, we're going to place the ball and we're going to make contact, but I don't want you to swing past the contact point. Now, intuitively, we're always told to swing through, follow through on every shot, but stick with me and you're going to discover what happens when you stop on contact. So we're going to place the ball up, contact it, okay? Try to stop right in contact. And you don't have to go that fast. You can go place, and slow and hold it there. And a couple of great things happen in this exercise. First of all, you're gonna slow down and get those strings squared up on the ball. But the other thing you're learning, gonna learn is how to accelerate the racket into the ball to make the ball travel away. And while you didn't see my ball actually travel, it moved along pretty quickly for a swing that lacked a follow through. So the ball doesn't really react to a follow through, it reacts to where you accelerate into the contact point. So this exercise is going to help you not only get the feel for squaring the racket up, but it's also going to teach you where that acceleration happens to really make the ball travel away. And this exercise of stopping on contact is also useful and very helpful for those of you who struggle to get to the natural and comfortable extension, the ideal extension on contact on your serve. So it just gives you an opportunity to go place the ball up and get to contact and see if you're up to a nice, comfortable, extension, okay? You're really gonna help you feel yourself get up there and pop that ball away. So now that we have performed a lot of different exercises, rehearsing the motion, simulating different types of things that are gonna help build this motion the right way, you can begin to get on the court and try to practice it. But what I want you to do is follow this sequence very, very carefully. I want you to, to perform five rehearsals for every ball that you try to play. So I will come up and I will hold the ball and rehearse. And I'll do it again five times. I want to rehearse this movement five times. And then after I've done, let's say I'm into my fifth one, I do my fifth rehearsal. And now I'm going to play the ball. And when I go to play the ball, I'm not trying to place the ball into a target at this point in time. I'm actually just trying to get the feel for the movement. And if you do five repetitions, and when you go to play the serve, it 
the movement breaks and you go to a forehand grip and you push it through, then you need to go back and do more repetitions. So you can reduce the number of rehearsals between actually playing the ball if you're successfully playing the ball with the grip and getting the motion right. But if you're not, then you need to increase your rehearsals and your repetitions between playing the ball. Keep doing it, doing your rehearsal. Keep working it. And then, after a few minutes, I actually do want you to care where the ball goes. Because what we're ultimately trying to do is learn how to control the ball to a specific location in the service box using the motion and the grip. So in the beginning, you might find that your, your ball's just going off the court and it's not anywhere near the box. That's just helping you get the feel and that you're on track if you're doing that. But over time, you're gonna transition from just kind of getting the action, the motion right, to holding the movement and really working on placing the ball. And it is that magical time where you're gonna to start to begin to trust this new motion and this movement and start to be able to place the ball with accuracy and confidence under pressure. But you've got to do these reps. You've got to get your equity in your serve account back up to square one, and you've got to start building that equity little by little. And again, the good news is you can practice a lot of these movements and things at home. You don't have to be on a tennis court. And then when you do get to the court, don't just hit ball after ball after ball. Keep repeating the motion that you want to have and then implement that motion with the ball. If it doesn't work, go back and do more rehearsals. So this is a challenging, challenging thing to do for many, many recreational tennis players, but the benefits are phenomenal. You very, very rarely see a player that is above, let's say the 3-5 level, who is serving with this type of a motion, this, this waiter's tray forehand grip motion. Very rarely do you see them higher than a 3-5, very unusual. And conversely, you almost never see a 3-5 player with this grip and this motion. So I think it's a big factor. If you're trying to become a 4-0, 4-5, 5-0 player, and you're currently in the 3-5 or 3-0 range, this is a key skill to learn how to build and develop in order to achieve your goals in your tennis game. So that's it, the waiter's tray position and how to overcome it with a series of successful drills. I hope you really benefited and enjoyed from today's lesson and you'll take these concepts to the court to help build your serve into a professional quality weapon. And speaking of that, be sure to click in the link down below to gain access to my video guide which covers the key principles you need to master to achieve your full serving potential and develop your serve into a professional quality weapon. I'd love it if you'd like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments down below. And let us know if there's a specific topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. We'd be glad to do so. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next lesson.